Hi, I'm Andrea from AWS. Hi, this is Imtiaz from Experian, and this is my architecture. Thanks for being on the show, Imtiaz. What business problem did you solve with this architecture on AWS? The business problem that we tried to solve is bringing the client's custom models into Experian. Um, what used to take several months um, is now we, we are able to onboard those models in a matter of a few days, if not a few clicks, uh, to take them to production. Fantastic. Let's dive into the architecture. Sure. Okay. So in this case, who do you define as your user? Our users are data scientists who are building the models and using our model development toolkit. What they do then is we actually provide them a UI portal, which gives them a seamless experience to follow a sequence of steps to upload the model artifacts, which is usually a Python serialized file, a pickle file that they're uploading, mm -hmm. and an attributes.py file that defines what the model is about, and some client library dependencies that they basically def um, define as part of the upload process. I see. So they, they okay, upload all those files, and how do you initiate this request now? Like now that they've kind of initiated a request, what's the next in the flow? So once the um, artifacts are uploaded through the UI, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, a platform API that gets kicked in uh, in the back end. These APIs are running for it. Uh, what we do then is basically create an entry in our model registry. Okay. So we call our open source service that allows you to create an entry in, the, in our data store. At the same time, we write the artifacts to the S3 bucket, and then we write an event to the Kafka topic, I see. MSK to initiate the build process. Okay, so now it's ready for build process. And then take us through the kind of series of stuff involved in the actual build process. Sure, so once the event is written to the Kafka mm -hmm. queue, because this is an event-driven architecture, you have a consumer app which is running. In this case, the build machine happens to be running on EC2 instances. I see. What it does is this, the event, once it is written, mm -hmm. it triggers the build process. The build process essentially in the machine basically copies artifacts from S3 uh, to its local drive. Yep. And then it also pulls uh, other libraries from Artifactory. And there are base files that are required for containerizing this and building a SageMaker mm -hmm. compatible image. I so see. there's Docker installed on EC2 and we build a Docker image. And that image then, once it is built, gets pushed into ECR repo. Okay, so the build process essentially means that you containerize it, you put it in a registry, and is ready now, right, yes. for, for deployment. Tell us a little bit more about, I see SageMaker. Yes. And I'm just curious, like, why did you choose SageMaker for this specific use case? Because SageMaker is a managed, um, uh, managed service that AWS offers. It allows you to build, deploy, test, and train your models at scale. Uh, and you, you have the luxury of focusing on your core business capabilities rather than trying to worry about the infrastructure in order to provision the services. I see, and how do you call the SageMaker? Yeah, so once the image is pushed to ECR repo, mm -hmm. um, the next step is basically creating the endpoint configuration. Um, and once the endpoint configuration is created, the endpoint configuration deals with, you know, trying to pick the right instance type, right? Trying to figure out what the scaling policy is going to be attached to this particular model. Um, and once the endpoint configuration is created, then you create the endpoint. Uh, that's essentially the start of, you know, so, Model inferencing. I see. And tell me a little bit more about those endpoints. Like, what were some decision criteria that went into creating them? So, as part of the endpoint creation, um, the endpoint configuration, uh, we have the intelligence baked in, where depending on the ML framework that you have chosen, depending on the number of features that this model is actually going to consume, and depending upon the kind of workloads that we're expecting in production, we are able to then basically pick the right instance type and attach the scaling policies. Oh, wonderful. All right, so now you know, you're using SageMaker endpoints. At any given point in time in this process, as a consumer, I want to know the status of my work. Yes. How do you initiate, how do you get that information back to the user? Yeah, because this is an asynchronous process, mm -hmm. things are happening in the background, right? And they can take anywhere from a few minutes to, uh, depending upon the model complexity, it might, it might take some time. So we actually, have a process built in here where um, SageMaker is emitting those events to event bridge, right? And there is a Lambda function that is written that's actually watching for these events and gets triggered when there's an endpoint change, um, right? When the endpoint is built. And this Lambda actually essentially then does the same thing. It writes an event to the mm -hmm. Kafka topic because then you can build a consumer app, which is essentially sitting here, 
uh, that gets triggered. Mm -hmm. And this uh, consumer app, which is sitting on Fargate, writes the message back to the portal so that the status can be viewed I see. Uh, by the end user, whether it's or the model uh, deployment succeeded or not. And also, we if it succeeded, then we actually update the endpoint information back to the model registry. So the, the end users doesn't have to worry about the internal mechanisms or the URI is. They just can't refer to the model indicator and able to invoke the model for inferencing. I love this architecture. And uh, so what benefits does your consumers get from using this architecture? Uh, definitely. I think, as I said, the time to market is one of the big factors. The second thing is the scale at which this can be deployed. So today, consumers don't have to worry about whether they should really need to work with us. They can have a peace of mind that if they deploy this model in our environment, mm -hmm that's going to scale, regardless of um, the, the cycle. So you can have a Thanksgiving uh, event, a major event, so you have TPS workloads going through the roof. You don't have to worry about that, whether this is going to scale or not. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for hosting.